Now, just on our now we just on our little bushwalk, but as we've left the camp, there was some birds alarm calling. A lot of there's a lot of bird activity at the moment, but there's a bush baby that's come out actually very early, and the reason for that is because there's a snake in the tree. You can probably hear all these birds alarm calling at the moment. Try to see if we can get it all for you. There's lots happening here. Hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. This is so exciting. What a start. But I have never seen a bush baby during the day. See how the birds are chasing the little bush baby too. That's quite interesting. Try to keep an eye on the snake. Now the snake is actually a female worm slung. You can hear the birds. It's in some thick trees at the moment. Trying to find it again. Let's have a good look here. It is still there. It's very tricky to see. Can you see it, John? Right in that little clump in the tree. Um, the babblers, basically, exactly where those babblers are there, it's busy striking. I wonder, um, from here you might be able to see, have a look around, but you see that dark little clump through those branches, that rather thick stem? Mm. That's a snake. Got it, there we go. There it is. Isn't that amazing, everyone? That's why the Aramark babblers, there was an orange breasted bush shrike, fork tailed drongos, there's, there's a lot of birds, there were starlings also. So all these birds have come to alarm call at this at the snake, and some of them have just come to investigate. To see what the others are alarm calling at. Now, um, Brent and Jamie are back. They're going to be on the vehicles this afternoon. Um, they've had a little bit of a break just for the week and um, preparing for our television show Sunday evening. And James will be in the tent, and myself and jean will be on bushwalk. <laughs> There's a lot going on there at the moment. Wow, look at that. Isn't that amazing? I find it fascinating how that snake is just sitting there. It was striking at the birds earlier, but it's amazing how the birds are able to get out the way so quickly. This is very exciting. Uh, looks like our bush babies have disappeared. Just having a look around to see, but... <laughs> is it? Can you see it? Wow. It's incredible how these birds and these babblers go and attack the snake to try and mob it, to chase it away. Snake is trying its best, or it's, like I said, it's a female worm slung. She's brown in color. The males are often a greenish, sometimes yellow-black color in certain parts of South Africa. The, but this is a female. Quite a big female by the looks of things. <laughs> this is incredible. Really fantastic, wonderful. Oh, look.
look at that tongue. Can you see that? Um, now, we know that reptiles, and especially snakes, use their tongue to taste the air. It's a sensory organ be able to work out what is around them. Now this female Boomslang was striking at the birds. I'm very surprised she didn't actually hit one of them. And the birds are obviously just too fast for her. But she is still moving around there. It's one of the birds. A bit tricky to see with all this foliage around at the moment. Oh, there's a This is really a great start to the walk right in camp. It's amazing. Just shows you, you know, some of you ask where about we live. We do live in the wild. We encounter a lot of animals around camp. We do have to always be aware of what's around us. But the uh, boom slung is generally a very placid snake. They do try to avoid people as much as possible. And, um, and if, if you do come across them, they usually climb up into the tree and get out of your way. They are back fanged, which means the fangs sit right at the back of their mouth, and um, and they they have a, a hemotoxic venom. Now, hemotoxic means that basically it attacks the blood, and you bleed internally from a bite of a of a boom slung. But they they actually not responsible for. Oh, there's a bush baby. The bush baby's back. Just off to the right, he's going to climb up into the tree. There he goes. Look here, everyone, the bush baby's back. Wow, this is amazing. Look at that, he's jumping around. Now I'm surprised because that little bush baby will be very wary of the, of the boom slung. Oh, look at that. <laughs> This is really fantastic. As I said, I've never seen a bush baby during the day. Look at those big eyes scanning around. Now it's obviously got those big eyes because they are mainly nocturnal. You see those ears, they really listen out very, very well. They'll feed on insects, but usually the sap they prefer the sap of uh, acacia trees. That's what the bush babies will feed on. I hope you are all enjoying this as much as I am. This is really, really great. Now, uh, yesterday we had we had leopards and some elephant around with Taylor. And it just shows you there's so much going on, including these tiny creatures like snakes and bush babies, which you don't see very often, especially during the day. Just having a quick check on the snake. It hasn't moved. It's still curled up in the top of the branches. I think we should just enjoy this bush baby for a moment. Maybe it jumps for us. There's a beautiful gray-headed bush shrike calling. You can just hear that sound, that... <laughs> Anne, you say the bush baby's so fat. Um, oh, do you think so, Anne? I, d <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I suppose. Maybe. I think it's fluffy and furry. One, uh, I mean, they... <laughs> They are so cute. They really, uh, that's the best way to describe them, just cute. Look how agile it is climbing on these branches. That's a lovely view of it through there. Now, Uh, Shelly, no, this is not the same thing as a lemur, not at all, they're very different. They, um, these are related to primates, they, though, they're nocturnal primates. Uh, we have the lesser bush baby, which is this one we can see, and then a greater bush baby, which is much bigger than that. Much, much bigger. Oh, look at that, it's incredible. 
not related to the lemur though. Now there are a lot of sharp thorns on this tree. It's climbing a big um, buffalo thorn, or Zizifus macronata, but these thorns don't seem to bother it. It's able to move around very, very well. Now, interesting thing is bush babies are territorial, so they will be moving around in an area that they've set up a territory in. And how they mark their territory is also quite interesting. They actually urinate on their hands, and while they're moving about, their hands will then leave the scent, and that is to mark their territory. James Duncan, very good question. You, you asked how much does the daytime hinder their sight um, because, of, because of them being nocturnal. Now, fortunately, it's actually very gray this afternoon, so it's not too bright. We've had very cloudy conditions today, so I don't think it, it hinders them too much in conditions like this, but they, they are very, very careful, I'm sure, not to affect their eyesight too much, and that's why they generally stay in dark holes in trees and that sleep there until it gets dark but I don't know if it will actually affect their eyesight very much if it is bright out I'm really not too sure the snake is still there alright well this was a fantastic way to start our bushwalk I think we're going to move on and head out see what we what we can find but let's head over to Brent who would love to say good afternoon to you. I said we were going to leave but things got a bit interesting here again and I thought we'd stay because this uh, snake is moving around a bit, the boomslang. You can see her and the birds have come back to mob it. The bush baby appears to have moved off. I think it's gone back into a hole in a tree somewhere and as it jumped, it jumped once or twice and we lost it in thick foliage. But have a look at that snake. You can see the tongue moving in and out, tasting the air, basically working out what's around it. And you see every now and then these birds come in, a lot of starlings around, and they'll mob the snake. Trying to chase it away, I assume. And it's funny, even though there might not be a, a nest nearby, because it is a predator, the birds will alarm call and mob it to try to chase it away. Especially a boomslang. Oh, Charlotte from Port Elizabeth. Hello, Charlotte. Um, I wonder what the weather's like down there at the moment in the windy city. Now, Charlotte, I'm not sure who's more afraid, the snake or the birds. Judging by the bird's behavior, I think the snake is. The Aramark babblers are back. Listen to that. So I think it's the snake, Charlotte, because the way they are mobbing the snake, they're not afraid at all. That's amazing. Listen, listen. Now that's what I heard initially, all these birds alarm calling, the starlings screeching, the babblers going mad, and that's how I managed to find the snake early, uh, earlier. And we've spoken about this before, uh, just listen, listen out to the bush, because um, you'll often find other interesting creatures if you listen to birds, or like Brent is listening to those impala alarm calling. Maybe he manages to find a leopard. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Oh, isn't this fascinating? Now we're going to stay with the snake for a while and see what happens if the birds chase it away. But while we do that, we're going to head to a short ad break 
Join us again afterwards and see what happens. All right, everyone, you still with us, um, our internet viewers, and we are practicing our commercial breaks for our TV show on Sunday. Let's see what happens. This worm slung's moving around. Oh, and you'll see if she starts moving. Mary, we do not carry anti-venom with us at all. We don't even have it in camp. Because, Mary, the reason we don't carry anti-venom, and listen to these birds, they are going mad. And the boom slung striking at them. This is amazing. This really is a fascinating sighting. So, Mary, we don't carry anti-venom or keep it in camp because often what can happen is people may uh, react badly towards the anti-venom, actually worse than the actual venom. So you have to be so careful with administering anti-venom. You can only do it in a hospital by uh, and only a professional can administer it have to give the right dose it also depends on the snake that bites you nowadays what they do in hospital is they'll treat the actual symptoms of the snake bite and they won't give you anti-venom for example a black mamba um, is neurotoxic it contains neurotoxic venom which attacks the nervous system shuts down your breathing so all they would do is put you on ventilators and try and uh, basically cleanse your system wait for the poison or the venom rather to work out of your body so you do have to be very careful with anti-venom so we don't carry it at all if someone gets bitten we do our best to treat the symptoms until we get them to uh, to a hospital depending on how serious the bite is and from which snake will depend on what measures we take to get them to hospital whether it's a helicopter airlip, airlift um, or just drive them out to the nearest hospital okay let's head back to james in the tent see what he's managed to find I don't know about a snake whisperer, maybe more bird whisperer, James, because the birds told me where the snake was. <laughs> um, it's still up in the tree, and this is just such an incredible um, sighting. You, you, we don't often get to see snakes, and if we do, it's often a flash and they disappear. So to be able to sit underneath a worm slung like this and see these birds mobbing it, it's striking at them and the birds picking at the snake, really is amazing. Debbie, I don't think these babblers would actually kill the snake. I think they would purely try and mob it to chase it away. Now, they pick at it. Um, I, I, I highly doubt they'd be able to kill the snake. The babblers, they do not, uh, do not hunt snakes or eat snakes. They're more seed eaters. Now, there's that beautiful gray-haired bushrike calling again. It's a bit difficult to see, and they jump around those bush strikes. So we'll stay on the snake for the moment. The bush babies have moved off. Uh, like I said, I think they disappeared into a into a hole in a tree somewhere. Oh, this, the bird life around us is is really great at the moment. The babblers, the starlings, the grey-headed bush strike. I'm sure you can hear these sounds around us. Um, Lily, good question. What is the difference between alarm call and a normal call? So the alarm calls generally from certain birds, especially these starlings, these, ba these babblers you can hear, the, the sounds they're making. Um, but, but when birds are all congregated in an area, it's usually the sign that it's an alarm call. But those starlings, their, their alarm call was what alerted me. And it's basically a, a, um, a screech, if that makes sense. Like, um, I, I can't do it, unfortunately. I'll see if they do it again. Um, they're not doing it at the moment. The starlings aren't. It's just the babblers. And because all these birds are around here... Um, they were screeching earlier. 
and we may hear it again and that's what alerted me to the snake. Now speaking about all these birds around, Jamie has a beautiful lilac breasted roller. This little bush baby just stuck its head out. Now that's a little owl, owl box uh, um, or bird box that is sometimes used for birds. Um, and these bush babies look like they are occupying it at the moment. And again, I think that all this alarm calling from these birds is what alerted this bush baby to come and investigate, see what is going on, are they in danger? Because as we know, the bush babies are mainly nocturnal. So this is really, really special to be able to see one. And again, all of this is happening in our camp. It's, it's, it really is wonderful and it's, it's sightings like this that are really interesting because it's where we live. It just you just understand again that we are living in nature. Things are happening happening around us all the time. The snake is still we just wanted to show you this bush baby there as it just disappeared back in. Because let's see if he sticks his head back out. As I mentioned, this is the first time I've ever seen a bush baby out during the day. So that is really special sighting and just as you're climbing around, let's see now we can the snake again. It's still up there, same position. Just starling now that birds seem to have moved. Maybe the snake will eventually move off. It's these birds stopping it. I think it was worried it moved around too much that the birds would uh, would would attack it even more. So it's preferred to kind of hide in the thorns of this buffalo thorn tree. And then the bird ball moved up. So I think what we might do is also leave leave this area now so that if the snake did want leave, leave this area now so that if the snake did want to move on or move down from the tree it could do so. Wasn't this amazing? <laughs> I've never seen a bush baby come out and investigate a snake or, as I said, just, just a bush baby during the day. I mean, even at night, when you do see them, it's often a, a glimpse because they jump and they, they move around very, very quickly. Very special sighting. I, I really hope you've enjoyed it and you understand just how rare it is to see it. All right, we are going to leave the DRC now, head out on our bushwalk. Let's head over to Brent and get an update from him and his impala that were alarm calling.